Hey guys, welcome back for another Full Joy Mom video. In today's video, I'm going to just have a chat with you about some thought processes that pulled me through really hard times. Um, things that I would think on when it felt like there was no hope. There was just no hope in this situation. So if you need some encouragement today, you need some refreshing thoughts, some hope, then stay tuned. Well, if you are new here, hi, my name is Dawn Marie. I am so thankful that you have stopped by this video. I am so grateful to be able to pass on things that the Lord has given me in my life as a um, stay-at-home mom that have helped me so, so much. Um, went through, you know, like we all do, a couple really hard seasons. And one in particular um, felt like everything crashed, like all the things in life. And it was in that season that I learned a lot of what I'm going to share with you today. Um, the first tip I have for you is when you are so overwhelmed, um, you're trying to get through your day as a mom, but your brain is just like, there's so much going on in here because of all of the trials of life that you are finding it hard to even function. Something that's really helped me is to remind myself to just do the next thing. I have to, you know, it's like you don't even know where to go or what to do. You just do what's in front of you. Don't worry about all the things that are real and serious and threatening to your life and to your family. You just do what's in front of you. You just do the next thing. Um, and that has helped me through a lot of tough seasons, uh, just, you know, waiting on circumstances to change, just do the next thing, just do the next thing, just do the next thing. Um, that is also something that I operate under when I'm just having an off day where I'm really overwhelmed. I just do the next thing in front of me and don't allow my brain to really think about much else. The next thing that really hopes, that really hopes, that really helps hope is when you are in the middle of something that is something you should worry about, right? Like it's technically, like I think sometimes we're like, oh, like don't be ridiculous, don't worry about it, it'll all work out. And then sometimes you're walking through stuff and you're like, it doesn't really look like it's gonna work out and uh, it definitely should, it needs consideration. Um, something that I like to do is not think about it all the time and keep a really close eye on what I'm thinking about. You know, your frontal lobe of your brain helps you to think about what you are thinking about. And in those seasons, it's like you just give that thing back to Jesus 500 times. And so as soon as you catch yourself thinking about it, um, as you're giving it back to Jesus, just remember you're not giving it back to him because it isn't worth worrying about because it is you're just giving it back to him because that's what he said to do he said cast all your worries cares and anxieties on me because i care for you um i was in one particular season i think i referenced it already where it was just like every part of my life had crashed and um there were things to still be thankful for right which is a huge help studies show that being thankful for just three things decreases your cortisol level by 25%. So if you find yourself in the middle of like, you can just feel the stress starting to rise. If you will pause and be thankful for three things, you um, you actually immediately feel your cortisol, your stress come down a notch. I mean, I've really found that helpful. You know, maybe you are up against something in your marriage and it's like, yeah, there's like a ton to focus on that is legitimate and negative and problems that need fixed. Well, what's really helpful so that you're not dwelling on that all the time is to find things to be thankful for. And while I'm not into comparing, like I don't think you should compare your marriage to someone else's marriage, who you are to another mom, um, I do find it helpful to, you know, like be in seasons with your spouse or with whatever it is. And you're just kind of like, well, at least it's not this. And you're not comparing, you don't pick out a person, but you're going like, hey, at least he's not and fill in the blank, right? Like, or at least the situation is not, like it could be worse basically is what I'm saying. Remind yourself that it could be worse. Are you walking through something really bad? Yes, but could it be worse? It probably could. So 
sometimes that's, you know, all there is to, to really be grateful for is that it could be worse. <sighs> Jesus can be trusted. Like he can be trusted. And I know that there's a lot going on in the news and the media right now. Um, you hop on social media for one second and it's like this space that used to be fun and like sort not safe. Social media was never really like safe for your mind, but it was like every once in a while you would find something that you're like, Ooh, probably shouldn't read that. Probably not gonna be helpful to my life. Probably keep scrolling. Now it's everywhere all the time. And I feel like I'm just, I haven't been on social media much because it's not helpful to my brain. It's not helpful to my level of hope. But when I was in the bottom of the barrel situation, Something that I found was reminding myself that I am an eternal being. Like, we all have hope in the Lord. We all get to hope in Him and hope that He is going to turn things around. He is going to work it out for our good. There are loads of promises in the Bible for you to stand on. And we can have hope because of Jesus, even when that situation shows no hope. So in seasons of hopelessness, something that I have found great joy in is thinking about the fact that we are eternal beings. We are eternal beings. Like we're going to get to live in heaven forever with Jesus. So whatever you just read that has you all stressed out, whatever you heard in the news that's like, ah, pin eternity up against it. Like remind yourself Think up the worst scenario. I mean, not all the time, but like, you know, you read the headlines and then you're like, I have kids and what's your future going to look like? What's my future going to look like? Go there in your mind and then go, oh, well, whatever. Like if we all die, like who cares? It doesn't matter because this life is so temporary. I think that that's something that we don't think about enough as Christians that we don't talk about enough. Um, I actually heard a pastor one time who was a big traveling pastor, he talked about his conversation with another pastor who had established a church in a third world country and grown really, really quickly. And he was like, how did you do it? Like, how do you have a thousand committed pastors um, raising X amount of dollars? And what, like, how did this happen? And the pastor said, we talk about eternity here. We preach about eternity. In America, your churches don't know much about eternity. And that really impacted me. Um, and while I'm not like a scholar, theologian, I, I don't even have Bible verses to quote to you about heaven right now, but I know Jesus and I know God and I can see his creation around me. And so I know that heaven is going to be amazing. And I know that he's told us that we are eternal beings created in his image, that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, that no man comes to the Father but through him. So I know how to get to heaven. I am secure in my salvation, which if you are not, I have a video up above. Please go and find hope. Get filled with hope. Give your life to Jesus and you can have eternal, never-ending hope in him. Um, and then come back and finish watching. So I know how to get to heaven. I know that my life is hidden in Jesus. And thinking about eternity, like if you think about forever, that I, for me, that was just so overwhelming that my brain would kind of shut down. But if I thought about like 900 years, you know, thinking about like, oh, I, I hope I live to 120 and you go like, wow, like all the stuff you could get done in your life. If you lived a healthy life and you lived to 120 and then think about like, wonder what it was like for all the guys in the New Testament or in the Old Testament who lived into their 600s and 900s. Like that's so long, like what a long time to live. And then recognizing the fact that like, that's not actually comparable to eternity, to never ending, never endingness. Um, and it's awesome to think about, like Jesus, he's great. If you've experienced his presence and fellowshipping with him, it's the best thing ever. And that's what you're going to get to do forever. Like, do I know exactly what it's going to look like? No, but I trust him and I have ideas about it. And I think about getting to create with him forever and how much fun that would be. And um, I think about what it will look like. I think it's probably not as boring as my childhood um, teaching gave me. The last thing that I will leave you with is reminding yourself of your own track record with the Lord. Something so amazing about a continuous journey with Jesus is that when you get to a hard spot, 
you can turn around and look back um, and remind yourself of who God has been to you. I love going to the Bible for examples of who God is and how I can trust him and what I can believe him to do in my own life. But I also love, and I love listening to other people's testimonies, right? But I also really love going back and listing who God has shown himself to be to me in my life, how he has not failed me, how there were times when it did not look like it was going to work out. And then sure enough, he pulled me up out of that pit and placed me high upon a rock. Just because you're in a hard season doesn't mean that you've done anything wrong. The Bible talks a lot about hardening you to the hard circumstances of life. That one's in Isaiah. Um, It talks about bearing up under a trial, not the trial being removed, but how getting strength through walking through that trial gives you everything that you need to be who God has called you to be. James is so great for trials um, with those verses. You know, write those things down that he has done for you. List those things out. Going back to the marriage stuff, maybe you need to start a thankful journey, journey, a thankful journal rather, um, and write down the things that you can find in your marriage to be thankful. Um, and then take your hands off the rest because to be honest, you're not going to do or say anything that's going to change your husband anyways. Jesus is the only one that's going to do that. And the Bible is very clear. Oh, where is it? I don't know, but there's this really awesome verse somewhere that talks about how your husband's not going to be won over by your words, but by your character and your conduct and your actions. You know, if you're in the middle of a spot where it's like you really feel like you're lacking in your marriage, like there's a spot where your husband isn't coming through, where you feel like you need him to come through. And if you will turn to Jesus, Jesus will fill that void for you. It's not always easy, um, but he will. As you are on this journey for hope, remember to watch what you are consuming. You know, I tell my kids, don't put garbage in my mouth, so I'm not going to put garbage in my mind. And just because it is relevant news does not mean you necessarily need it in your life. I pray that this video encouraged you. Give it a thumbs up if it did. I love hearing your comments below. And if you're new here, be sure to subscribe. I love you guys so much. I hope that you have an amazing full joy mom day. May the Lord bless you and keep you until next time.